Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Going to look at John Romita Jr.'s first Batman here in Punisher Batman, uh, written by Chuck Dixon, inked by Klaus Janssen. But uh, this is sort of the um, early spiral, the post-speculator boom is, has, has exploded and now we're collapsing in the mid-90s. And this is Marvel and DC, man, trying to sell books any way they can. So let's do a Punisher Batman crossover. We got JRJR on the penciling duties. And having him draw Batman was like WrestleMania 8 when you saw Jim Ross in WWF. How is that possible? <laughs> that is the perfect analogy, Ed. <laughs> let's dive in. Uh, and this is this is post War Zone, Jim JRJR era, and man, did he do a good Punisher in War Zone. Absolutely. So it was kind of like, yeah, bring this on. Check this stuff out, man. Chuck Dixon, writer of Punisher and Batman comics. Klaus Jansen, artist on Punisher and a Batman comic or two. You might have heard of it. And then JRJR is the is the X Factor, who's this uh, very, really accomplished Marvel artist who had a whole career there. And it's just interesting to see his take at this time, on a DC set of characters. To me, J.R.J.R. was the top guy at this point at Marvel. You know, sure. so many guys jumped ship, and he was like the one great one that stayed at Marvel. And there's your credit. Christy Shiel on the colors, uh, a.k.a. Max Shiel. Um, we pointed out some of her great coloring in past videos. So Daredevil Born Again. Also a veteran of, uh, you know, work, working with Ramita Jr., but also just one of the great colorists. And getting into the early days of, like, the digital application, so... I am guessing that she was still producing color guides traditionally, and then you end up with these, uh, oh, I thought there was a, yeah, Steve Buccellato and Electric Crayon as separators, which I believe is translating those traditional color guides into digital, into digital colors. Here, here's the thing, though, uh, and, and I am extrapolating this from the back pages of, of, of uh, Image Comics, when there's like the little biography of like Ruben Rude and those guys. So we have the idea of like in that Abrams book, uh, the idea of what a color guide is. And, and you hit it with the Doc Martin dies and you have your Y2, blah, 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 all of that stuff. Uh, the color guides of the computer era are different animals because you're not, first off, you don't have to do that, that um, Y2, R2 thing. They are coloring these things way more ornately to the way that they would prefer it to look on the printed page, and then you give it to those computer guys to do the tech technical works. You know, you're going to kayfabe affect me into starting to buy color guides with this kind of talk. <laughs> but if you look in those back pages of those image things, these guys are sitting there with all the Copic markers, a million color pencils, and just just coloring as best they can to look like the final product, and then the technicians go in and do their thing. We start out in Gotham City, <laughs> Punishers, shooting up some mobsters in a warehouse, <laughs> of course. Do you think there's any any uh, sort of acknowledgement here of, like, the Stephen Platt kind of bullet casings? You know, like, that's a lot of casings, and they're, they're well lit. Time to pay some bills. You want to support Cartoonist Kayfabe? Buy our books. We're both working cartoonists. The best way you can support Cartoonist Kayfabe is hit your local comic shops or wherever you buy books and pick up our latest titles. Starting with Ed Piscor's Red Room, the Antisocial Network, out now, available wherever books are sold, and the perfect thing to start reading before Trigger Warning starts in March. This will be available March 9th. Trigger Warnings in comic shops across this, uh, ac across the Blue Marble. And uh, if you love outlaw comics, if you like horror comics, violent comics, this is your outlaw comic for 2022. And Trigger Warnings, due to some ransomware attacks and a distribution level may be the most rare of all the Red Room comics. So whenever you see this comic book in your local comic shop, pick it up right away because it may not be there the next time you come in. And there are a few alternative covers that are available, including this gem from Peach Momoko. Not just a uh, institute cottage industry, but also a uh, friend of Cartoonist Cafe with, with quite right. a few of these. Uh, this is my contribution to the Red Room trigger warning cover for number one and homage to the Zap Comics Robert Crumb famous issue, uh, the fourth cover by Ed Piscor for Red Room Trigger Warnings number one, and those again will be in stores March 9th, and you can get Anti-Social Network right now. March is Cartoonist Kayfabe Month in the comic shops, Jimmy. Indeed it is. March 16th, you can pick up Hulk Grand Design Monster. This is my next comic, available wherever comics are sold from Marvel Comics, retelling the first 40 issues and approximately 500 issues of Incredible Hulk, 
Whether you're a longtime Hulk fan or a first time reader, this is the book for you. And there are some great variety of covers for this as well, including Peach Momoko's Hulk Grand Design cover, Marcos Martin doing a really good transformation of the Hulk. Kind of kind of jealous of all of these, to be honest with you, which is the mark of a good cover. And of course, cartoonist Kayfabe's own Ed Piscor doing the Todd McFarlane homage with the throwback Herb Trimpey Wolverine classic costume. And again, these are available in comic book shops March 16th. So mark your calendar, tell your comic shop to reserve this, and pre-order Hulk Grand Design Madness, which will be out in April, and uh, those pre-orders can start coming in now. So back to our regular programming. I really don't, because I don't think... John Romita Jr., and I don't know the guy, I never spoke to him yet, uh, but I don't get the sense that he's looking at his peers. In any, I, I feel like he's one of these guys who saw this as a gig because his dad did it, has excelled at the craft level to such a high degree, but he's not a guy, he's practicing on the page. Yeah, I think Punches he... his clock, starts his day, gets his day's goals done, clocks out goes to the disc, pops in that earring, goes to the discotheque, <laughs> putting that finger up to the sky at that disco ball, doing his shit. I think I saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's great about the idea of like matching Punisher up with Batman is that Punisher straight up calls Batman a Boy Scout. So you know when it's the Batman-Superman tandem... Superman's the Boy Scout because he's Batman's too aggressive. Like Punisher's the aggressive one. That's really funny. I never thought about that. And it's funny that like a Chuck Dixon writes that. Yeah. You would think that would be a shot that like, you know, John Byrne or somebody who does Superman would, would want to level that shot at Batman. But uh, it's kind of a great characterization bit. And here's our John Romita Jr. Commissioner Gordon standing outside and waiting to see doesn't want to risk cops lives on uh, what he knows are criminals and not sure who else is in that building. So let's let's let it sort out a little bit. And here comes our, our, our guy. I love the way J.R.J.R. builds figures. He knows the main basic shapes, but this is the knee he's going to give you. He knows the main forms. You know, the, these are called quads. So there's four muscles there that you got to figure out, but you don't got to get into all the sinew and that kind of thing. That goes into uh, a lot of figure drawing in comics. You get these squared off fingers. It's so stylized. Yeah, it's a good Batman. I think his Batman looks really cool. There's big Kelly Jones kind of uh, cow. Yeah. And pretty traditional Punisher, you know. Like I said, this is what you're seeing in Warzone around this time, maybe a little bit before this. Um, the, the square stuff that he does with figures, he applies to guns as well. He does. Always makes his guns look really good. Yeah. And you see that square stuff a lot, like, in these in these heads. I just um, picked up, I can't remember the name of it, but an anatomy drawing book. And they were showing, like, simplifying different forms. And the and the square kind of head, the, the couple of major planes in the head, is exactly how this book breaks it down. And John Romita Jr. would be your number one example of, of uh, that kind of squared, solid uh, figures. They fight to a uh, standstill. Everybody kind of runs their own way. And this is your guy who escapes from that paint warehouse covered in paint, paint, yellow paint, no less. You know, obviously a coward. And who's he answering to? Longtime Punisher, Nemesis, Jigsaw, who has teamed up with a good-looking Joker it's under a, uh, Romita Jr.'s gr pencil. Great intro, right? Like, very cinematic. You've seen this in movies and stuff. And this, I believe, is... This is a part two. Like, I think... Like, there's the... Yeah, you're right. There's the Batman Punisher. Barry Kitson art. And I think Chuck Dixon does that... That also, makes total sense. Uh, so they're alluding to some like previous events and things. Oh, oh, uh, uh, it's about it's about Batman. Like it's that Transformer Batman. That's you know, right. It's Azrael Batman, uh, and they talk about like yeah, Batman. He was way tougher uh, last week. By the way, Joker shoots this guy not once or twice, six times right there, point blank in the head. Yes, and he's done, and he's still yellow. <laughs> I feel like that should be orange. Just because of Comic Code Authority. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, here's our Punisher micro microchip hanging out eating pizza. I, I really don't agree with this skulleted microchip. No? I, I prefer him to have nice, tight, short hair. Not the um, Chester, Chester Brown gimmick. I'm trying to think. Is it in uh, Warzone that microchips start seeing a shrink? 
and Punisher's like following him around and stuff. It's a fascinating character because it's like you need some you need Punisher to talk to somebody. Like that's like his invention, right? You need you need some kind of like exposition, some kind of dialogue. So they arrive at uh, Microchip, and frankly, he'd be much better to have like maybe a puppy or something because like microchip is so nothing but when you get into punisher what he really is i'm much more comfortable with microchip the uh other uh, embittered adult than i am with batman's confidant the the teenage boy that's true uh let's go hang out in the bat cave robin yeah it's true but like what microchip becomes really is um deus ex machina you know he's the guy that hits a couple of buttons on the keyboard and now punisher can be anywhere that's really funny. That is what, what he is. It's like, we've got computers now. How does Punisher fit with computers? Yeah. There's <laughs> there's this one part where, I, I don't think we're there yet, but it's a, like Robin calls out uh, when, when there's like the computer, yeah, like, that, the, like the hacking war. Here, I, when we get there, I'll, I'll bring I, it up. I, I did want to just point out, you know, you talk about comics code, pretty brutal death for this guy, uh, buried up to his neck and then the tides rising. It's a fasc- Punisher's a fascinating character to, to have exist in the Comics Code Authority because they can never go full bore, you know? Like, we grew up watching those Van Damme and Steve Seagal movies with Uzis and drug cartel guys that look like this shit uh, standing at a wharf. And, and we know how the movies play out, and they have to kind of dance around it in the Punisher comics that we were picking up at the Rite Aid as, as little kids really like some of the stuff Jansen's doing with his line work, like like some of the marks in that guy's hair, pretty unusual. And even you know, kind of scratching out these, you know, like the facial lines and things. Man, Jansen's great. What a, what a good pairing these, these guys are. I don't know how much you've seen of like uh, Romita Jr.'s pencils, but anytime I see them, I think like that's got to be an inker's dream to get hold of because they don't look like the Jim Lee super tight, like these are the lines I want you to cross hatch. They look much more like John Buscema where it's like all the form is here and now you put your uh, your finish on top. Right. And yeah, hacking into Jimmy's computer right now. So you have Jigsaw and Joker moving in on some organized crime in Gotham. You have Punisher trying to get to Jigsaw. Um, it's a very simple story, but super this is what simple. you want with these two characters. And they're on almost every page. I think the only page that they weren't on was the one page that introduced the gangsters previously. And from that point forward, it's kind of like you're going to get one of these guys on every page pretty much. I've been so into the, this like soupy atmosphere that's just delineated with, with line like that. It, it feels so effective to me. Yeah, this calls to mind like the Daredevil Romita Jr. stuff that Al Williamson would Absolutely. ink a lot of those lines. I wonder if there's a little homage there from uh, from Klaus Janssen. Here's that part where he's like, this guy set up a logic bomb, and it it reminded me like my last job was was at that uh, a call center, and like me and a, a couple dozen like me and maybe a dozen other people, we rose from just having to talk to regular customers to being a part of a help desk where we can just talk to the other operators, right? And we were always arguing, like, give us email so that we can, like, uh, interact, figure out, like, because we identify patterns of new problems and stuff. And when I left, they eventually, they, they gave the help desk email. And my my buddy, shouts to Dean Clean, he, on day one of getting email after we were, like, <laughs> arguing about it, he went on, the girl next to him, on her computer, set up an auto-response uh that was specific to his email and then he set up uh an auto response to hers that would send five emails so uh he thought it would i guess be happen one time and he created a logic bomb that took down the entire intranet of the entire company (laughs) computers in the philippines and stuff in two seconds because he sent one email to her she sent one email back to him. He sent five to her. She sent five to him. He right. sent whatever the multiplicate, like what, five times five, uh, 25 to her. And then it just, in two seconds, <laughs> all the computers went down. No more phone calls could come in. And he got fired in two days. <laughs> so that is what a logic bomb is. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's what these guys are playing with. Yeah, that's funny. It is. I do like that they're both behind a computer, though, because like bullets are flying, people are dying. At least you don't have the kid out there in the middle of that. 
the human target. And then Punisher showing up, pretty much uh, just walking by where these gangsters are hanging out, hoping to get picked up and brought in. And as soon as they do, Hulkamania is his, uh, his jacket to reveal two <laughs> Uzis and ready for business. Meanwhile, Joker's uh, in the same building, but playing the piano. It's Joker. He doesn't kill because he hates. He kills because he loves. <laughs> Computer coloring does not uh, look very good on this kind of paper. These are the early days, too. Like, you see a lot of these shapes, like the little round shapes and stuff. There was another program. I'm trying to think, like, what they would have been using. I know Dark Horse had a different program that they used, and, like, Corel was one of the early yeah. uses. But you would get all of these, like, 10% increments and mm -hmm. things you know like it wasn't all smooth gradients just i guess too much memory for some of that so you do get to see these things that don't last very long you know like things get better quick but you uh you'll have a couple of that legacy a lot of drawing here though in the, all the smoke for um you know digital color that's true yeah and, and by the way i have a lot of love for the best of this kind of coloring like the uh the steve olive all the optics stuff which i think he commissioned his own proprietary programs. Like, imagine what the fuck that yeah, must that have cost. Yeah, me, right? Punisher shot in both arms, by the way, and I mentioned that because later on there's going to be some stuff that I think maybe shouldn't work right. I like this Batman image a lot. To me, that does not feel like the Batman that you would see anywhere else, right. and I like how it looks. Like, totally. That's a pretty good interpretation, I think. Something, something kind of different for Batman at the time. And... Uh, <laughs> Jigsaw gets the drop on Punisher, who throws a grenade and rejigsaws his face. Yeah, of course we didn't see that coming. No, that's that's poor Jigsaw. That's like his um, the, the origin that just repeats over and over. Like how many times has he been jigsawed in the face? Which remind, which makes me think. Like I get it, I get it. If you're going to have Punisher Batman, uh, we know that Punisher really doesn't have that much of a rogues gallery. Probably should have been Kingpin, but uh, it has to be Joker. But the tandem of like a jigsaw and Two Face getting their fucking normal that faces fucked up really a lot good. of times, and in fact, it should have happened two times in each. Like where it's it, like, it should have, and it should have been uh, Batman doing the jigsaw face and Punisher doing the Two Face. Yeah, man. Yeah, why that 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 seems obvious. Why wouldn't you team those two up? It's just you want to you want Joker because that's the that's the big willy. Takes a takes a bunch of shots right in the gut and keeps coming. Thinks that he. Nobody's going to survive that. I killed the Batman. Not at all. <laughs> it, ta it takes half of a page for him to go from Batman on the ground holding his stomach to uh, one arm pulling up j uh, Jigsaw by the throat. Look at how cool that is, man. Like, in all the interviews I've ever seen with John Romita Jr., he's, he's like, humble to a fault. And just is like, oh, you know, I work deadline style. I do work quick. I just want to get the job done. But when you see something like this, nobody draws Batman like that. He... He is absolutely bringing some other thought and consideration to the table that he just has never expressed. Joker has the drop on Frank Castle and just shoots the gun and blinds him rather than shooting him in the head. That's one of those real effective things you see, you see in um, in good movies where, like, sometimes maybe they'll be in like suit, like the inside of a car and somebody will shoot a gun up just to like mess with somebody's ears and things. Don't necessarily have to put the slug in the guy to get the effect you want. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, gun gun and car stories going off. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk off cam. <laughs> all right. So Punisher chasing Joker now as this gunfight has gone all, all different directions. Um, so you get, you know, this this feels like crossover 101, right? Give give the opposite enemies. It's, almost, it's the tag team match, right? Now we're going to switch up who's who's fighting who. Except nobody cares about Jigsaw in any way, shape, That's or true. form. It, like it, when you get something like this, you realize that Punisher has nobody. Jigsaw's got to take the one, two, three. He's yeah. doing the job in this <laughs> <Yeah>. comic. <laughs> a little bit of a rub to be next to Joker, but come on, it's Jigsaw. And which it should have been Kingpin. It should have been Kingpin because there is no good rogues gallery, like you say. Like any good rogue and Punisher ends up dead. Yeah. So here's your your bleeding shoulders and stuff. That is a pinhead of Joker. It's true. That is a tiny, tiny little pinhead. And Punisher's going to kill Joker right here. 
you know, like like literally he's got the gun <laughs> pointed at his skull ready to go when Batman stops him and tells the Joker to run. This is uh, this is a, an interesting era. And we um, rev- we did a Chuck Dixon interview where uh, he sort of laid his cards on the table and established like he's a more he's a more conservative leaning guy. You know, Punisher is written best by conservative Old Testament dudes because that's what the character is like shoot first you know still a stick of bubble gum i gotta chop your hand off like that kind of stuff just no um nuance and batman's not that way and in the interview they were asking him like you know you don't agree like this character's politics his ideology is divorced from from your own and he's like, I'm a writer. Like, you know, I'm, I'm writing a story. Like, I don't agree with it. And in fact, we had to make special agreements at the at the uh, Batman writers retreats spearheaded by Denny O'Neill that we just don't talk politics at these things, man. We just handle business. But I do think that this is this comic is Chuck Dixon's opportunity to use Punisher as his own cipher to, like, show what kind of a pussy, quote unquote, uh, Batman would be, you know, in fact, letting Joker go, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's again, it's against my ethics. You know, he's, he's making fun of Batman right here. I think it's a good, uh, character moment, you know, because a lot of these crossovers have nothing. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like that's actually kind of a pretty good sequence, uh, for all those reasons you say, Ed, because it really does kind of highlight the differences between a Batman and a Punisher, but also sort of puts Punisher in this awkward, or I mean, Batman in that awkward position of like, "Mm, Joker, get out of here. Yeah, run. (laughs) It's kind of cool. And like these kind of things, it feels so pro wrestling to me, this, this, this particular book. Absolutely, man. That's, that's Macho Man and Hulk looking at each other. Absolutely. And there's your, your mega powers, uh, getting ready to do record setting buys for WrestleMania five. There's your setup. Buy the next one. Buy a ticket to the next one. And it's funny because he gets one punch in and Batman says, I let you have it. How how pro wrestling is that? (laughs) You probably thought you deserved it, so I let you have one. And then catches his fist on the next one and and easily kind of tosses him aside. And I think, like, what is what he shot in both arms. Yeah. Like, how does this fight go down if uh, Punisher's uh, whole? This this kind of stuff is is the the ultimate headache shit for the creatives, I'm sure, because now it has to go through DC editorial, has to go through Marvel editorial, and nobody's characters can be a bitch. So you got to like try to find some some balance or whatever. So you, so it's also like he needs to be shot in both arms so that there's plausible deniability. Yes. Uh, <laughs> just exactly just like right. pro wrestling. It totally you know, is. like like Bret Bret Hart is not going to get pinned if you don't hit him in the head with a chair. They have some creative control in their uh, contracts. <laughs> <laughs> but who has the favored nations? <laughs> So I think it's better than most of these crossovers are. You know, I, I've certainly complained about these kind of crossovers in the past. Um, nice dedication to Ross Andrew, artist that has a history with both of these guys and did the first Marvel DC crossover. That's Spider-Man, Superman. So kind of cool to call him out there. But I do think it's a better uh, intercompany crossover than most. Sure, sure. And uh, you listen, man, any chance to look at a little JRJR is a good day on the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel in my books, Jimmy. Uh, you good to go? Gay favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what is out there? Uh, Hulk Grand Design is kind of my focus now. It'll be in stores March 16th. You can pre-order that now. You can also pre-order Hulk Grand Design Madness. It'll be out in April. You can uh, subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug and see some of the behind the scenes of how I made Hulk Grand Design, see some of the original art from that, and a lot more of my process. Red Room Comics, uh, Trigger Warnings, is coming out March 9th. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Every single issue of Red Room, uh, the gore splatterpunk masterpiece of 2021, coming back 2022. Uh, Every single issue completely self-contained. Full stories in every issue. Going to be coming out on a monthly basis. Uh, You can read those comics at my Patreon today before they hit paper at my Patreon. Patreon.com slash edpiscor. Jimmy and I have links in our link trees in the description below this video where you can get to all of our comics materials, Ben. Uh, grab the comics, support the comics, it, support the comics. It keeps the Kayfabe channel running. 
What else do we have out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below the video, and you can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below the video. Another way that keeps the uh, comics Kayfabe, I mean Cartoonist Kayfabe channel running. And uh, without further ado, if you give them those motion orders, we'll be out of here. Read more comics.